welcome to SPSS class number 9 and I'm your facilitator Bright in Coma. In, th in this video, I will be demonstrating how you can perform a linear regression analysis. Just to give you a brief understanding so that you actually appreciate uh, what a regression model is. So, for you to be able to actually do a regression analysis, you must have data which is numeric in nature, especially um, the outcome variable. Especially the dependent variable is supposed to be numeric. If you have the data which is not numeric in nature, you might consider doing uh, a logistic regression analysis. With this data that I have here, it's highly likely that we can actually perform a well-made regression model analysis. In this data here, I've got exam score, I've got hours spent studying, I've got anxiety, then I've got, um, 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 I've got uh, A-level entry points. So the assumption here is that uh, exam score and how I spend studying and uh, entry points can actually influence anxiety. So anxiety here is our dependent variable, which we are assuming that the levels of, of anxiety will actually depend on scores, how I spend studying, and I level entry points. So we would want actually to statistically confirm whether these three factors can either increase anxiety or reduce anxiety. This is a model which actually adjusts for confounders. So before we can adjust for confounders, we will proceed first to perform um, a direct linear regression analysis. And I will be showing you how to do that. You click on analyze, then you go to regression, then go to linear regression, so I'll take away these variables because I was actually working uh, here. Oh, sorry. I was actually working on this data set. So we said that our, our, our variable which is being determined by other factor is the dependent variable. And in this case, we are using anxiety. So I'll click on anxiety. Then I'll click on that arrow. Then the list these are variables that we are calling independent like you can see here is independent or independence so you can have as many as possible i'll click there um let me just quickly you know uh close some okay fine so this the data is fine then i'll click on statistics i'll ensure that the estimates the model fit the confidence interval actually ticked i'll click there if I actually want to do some um, histograms and probability plot, I can, but no, it doesn't matter. Even if it's not there, I can actually even exclude these things. Then I'll click there. Then I'll see what is there. It's just giving me that this thing is being measured at 5% significance level. Um, I'll proceed to click on OK. So I have these results. So I've got the model summary, then I've got the analysis of variance, then I've got the, I've got the coefficients. So there's something that I did not tick, so this table is incomplete, so I'll go back there, or I can just actually click on recently, then I can uh, click on statistics, then I'll click on... Um, I'll click on estimates, estimates. Then I'll click on continue. So this is the table that I wanted. So now I can copy and paste this in Word. But remember, it's supposed to be uh, a leader table. But I just want to quickly show you how you can actually analyze. Uh, how you can actually analyze these things. Let me just add something on top there so that you now it's making sense. Let me just add something on top there and also at the bottom so that this thing is making sense to, to last.
let me remove this line okay then I'll go back to SPSS again I'll copy my analysis of variance table so here I'm actually you know just trying to demonstrate how you can analyze these things but the key table for you when you're doing the analysis of variance is the coefficients this table here which is this table which we have here I've actually because because this table is important I've actually formatted it uh, very nicely so I will start the model there is one so I'll say model equal to one means there is on only one linear model developed we are doing the interpretation for for that particular table I'll click there model equal to one model equal to one means there's only one linear regression model developed Ala, ara ara equal to zero zero point five fourteen a is the correlation which means there is a moderate positive there is a moderate because the number there is positive there is a moderate positive correlation R square equal to 0 0.264 equivalent to 26 percent so this is a correlation model equal to one means there's only one linear mission chip developed which as predictors constant a level entry points hours spent revising and exam score R square equal to 2.6 equivalent to points means the changes means means 26 percent of the changes observed or seen in the dependent variable which is and that can be explained by the by the variations or the effect of independent independent variables which are these so let me just copy these three variables which are then I'll just copy there and paste observed so this is how you can analyze this table 
we are saying that model equal to 1 means there's only one linear model developed which has predicted as constant A level entry points, a hour spent revising and exam score. R equal to 0.51 is a correlation which means there's a moderate there's a moderate positive correlation. R equal to 0.264 which is equivalent to 26% means 26% of the changes observed or seen in the dependent variable which is answered can be explained by the variation or the effect of independent variable which are A level entry points, hours spent revising and exam score. In other words we are saying that as exact changes, A level entry points and hours spent revising and exam score is, kept, uh, is only contributing for the 26% of that change. So for the other percentage, we don't know where it is coming from. So by doing that, it means you've actually analyzed this table. Then adjusted RIA equivalent to 0 0.126 it means that if we were to remove one independent variable among the three that we have here a level entry points how spent revising and exams exam spent revising it means the error square will change from 2.642 to 0 0.126 then we can go now to, to the analysis of variance. In regression, this is not very key for you, but when I look at the significance value, I can tell that the result is not significant. Our main interest is on this table. Let me take it a bit down and see how it's going to be. Let me show you how you can actually interpret these coefficients. You must you must pay attention to the significance level. The significance level will tell you whether the result is significant or not. So when I look at my significant level here, I can see that there's only the f there's only this uh, anxiety, the constant, which is 0 0.015, which is significant. The rest are not significant. Even from the confidence interval here when I look at the lower band and the upper band I can actually tell whether or not the result is significant and I can tell its precision the bigger the difference between the lower and the and the upper the lesser the precision or the lesser the strength the results are Immediately the confidence interval closes a zero like you can see here when you plot this on the number line You see that actually the zero has been closed. It means the results is not significant So what these values are communicating they are saying that the results is not significant. So Is the significance value? But for the sake of actually showing how to interpret this I will now quickly uh, write it down for you. So I'll start. For every unity increase in exam score or holding holding a level entry points and hours spent revising anxiety 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 increased by this value increased by 1.621 so this is what this is what this particular value means sorry 
these values here these are our, our area of interest so once you see this value is positive then it means that for every unit increase in exam score holding hours spent revising and entry points constant okay holding constant supposed to be constant here and that increased by zero by 1.26 but this result is significant so the result is insignificant result is not significant just so that you can you know follow through because the p value which we have here the p value is equal to 0 0.091 is actually above the 0 0.05 like that then i can copy this i can use it for the next statement i'll say for every unit increase in hours let me just do this i'll do this then i can just do this for every unit increase in how i spent revising holding a level entry points and exam score and that reduced reduced by this value here i'll copy this value and put the value there also the result is insignificant because the p value is actually at 0 0.075 is greater than 0 0.05 i'll further use just copy there and paste down there and say i will get this thing then i'll put this then i'll copy this so you're saying for every unit increase for every unit increase in a level entry points holding hours spent revising hours spent revising and exam score constant and that reduced by this value reduced by negative 3.18 result is not significant because the p value is 0 0.237 above the the threshold which is 0 0.05 so in other ways we are saying that anxiety a level entry points and exam score are not predictor can or cannot determine anxiety so here i was just actually trying to show you how you can analyze these coefficients that you have in this table so this is how you can actually analyze regression and do the interpretation